Showing out right here. Come on, Sean. I oh, there it is, and get you a dunk, buddy. All right. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kepp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hello and good day to y'all, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine, your weekly dose of old school NBA basketball. My name, of course, is Sean David. In today's episode, I want to take a look at what NBA legends have to say about one of the greatest point guards of all time, the glove Gary Payton. But before we start with that, let me ask you guys for a small favor. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoy the content, and don't forget to click the notifications button so you never miss an episode of the Basketball Time Machine. All right, you know, Seth, let's get right down into it. So the first clips that we're going to take a look at involve Jim Jackson, who played for the Dallas Mavericks in the mid-1990s, and some of the greatest players of all time. Let's hear what they have to say. Gary Payton, of the glove. One of the best defenders I've ever seen. Told you what he was gonna do and do it. GP, my man GP. Your head lumpy, I tell you your head lumpy. Probably the best trash talker in the history of the NBA, and it's been a lot. He was the type of player that was, was gonna give everything he had physically, and then also let everybody know about it. I can heat it up when you want me to. Yeah. He was gonna talk trash to the guy he was guarding, talk trash to the opposing coach, and just let everyone know in the building, Gary Payton was in the house. Gary Payton, the glove, GP is the glove because on defense, he would be on you like a glove. Gary rips it away, goes the other way into the lane, up top, Kemp is there! Oh, stolen by Payton, he makes a huge play! I mean, for point guards, he was a nightmare. He had those long arms, he was quick, he was fast, he was tenacious, and he was just mean enough to want to shut you up. Nice left handed entry to Gary. Turns up and under on Stockton. Oh, he dope. He was there every night, and you know you had a battle. So you kind of had to pencil his, pencil that Seattle game on the calendar and say, okay, uh, I know I'm in for a war here. Hey, look at the glove. Ooh, ooh. Oh, you gotta love that action. I was just showing out, just trying to have some fun, get back in the game. That's all. That is as terrific a move as you will ever see. Look at his blocker. Leads back, sent off battle, still foul. Outside the Smith. Stripped to the ball by Pierce. Sends it ahead to Gary. Too far ahead, he saves it. To oh! He'll lay it in. Oh, you gotta love that action. Good steal by Ricky. He saves it. Next thing you know, I get a great pass and make up what he was messing up. He threw the ball too far right here, but hey, look at the glove. Watch how I get it. Bang, oop, between the leg and got it right there to him. You see what I'm saying? That's what I like. I like it when I do things like that. It was definitely Gary Payton. I mean, Gary Payton was, uh, you know, I mean, I just, I remember our point guard when, you know, early on in my career, he, he didn't want to bring the ball up against Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really kind of how I started bringing the ball up and playing point forward. Gary would talk to whoever, talk to refs, players, coaches on other teams, fans. fans. Yeah. He talked nonstop and, uh, and backed it up. So he was the guy that, you know, I think was the ultimate. And I, it was a little personal. He got a little personal at times with folks. But I mean, I think, you know, that's, that's basketball. You're trying, like you say, you're trying to get an advantage. Yeah. You're trying to get over on somebody. And if you, if you backed down or you showed that you were scared, oh. then he had you. And the next segment that we're going to take a look at is with Steve Smith, one of my favorite players of the 1990s. Great shooter, great player, and seems to be a very nice person. He played for the Miami Heat and, of course, for the Atlanta Hawks and Portland Trailblazers. Let's have a look what he has to say. Smitty, it is hard for guards out in the perimeter to be honored as the best defensive player in the league. And Gary Payton did it. The only point guard to win Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, I got a taste of Gary. We got a chance to play against each other. Oregon State, Michigan State. And the first thing, first of all, we were chirping. Of course you were. At, at the beginning of the game. So that's where I knew he's one of the best talkers ever in the game of basketball. Then defensively, I got a chance to see this 6'4 guard who could change the game on the defensive end. The one thing I would love to say about Gary that everybody talks about his defense, but go look up his offensive numbers. Gary was always around 19, 20, 
21 points, could rebound the basketball, an unbelievable passer, and one of the best live passers we've ever seen in a game. And then he played 17 seasons as a point guard. That was some longevity back then. Okay, ooh, I ripped my guy, ripped uh, uh, Strickland. Oh, on the knees, look, ooh, and I threw it up. That's just good anticipation. I knew what I was doing. And Peyton gonna push it in a hurry. Top of the key, works his way around. Oh, what a move by Gary Payton. Oh, I'm sorry about this, Hornacek. Oh, man, I don't know what I was doing. I just crossed you over. <laughs> my bad, buddy. He knows, oh, he was going for it. I tricked you. Gotcha. That is as terrific a move as you will ever see. Underneath the Payton. Oh! Okay, this is a Phoenix. Oh, give it to me. Oh, Chambers, I'm sorry. I, you know, I, I don't know, I just fooled you right here. You thought I, you was gonna block it, but look what happened. Ooh, gotcha. Uh-oh, off the glass. Two. Tremendous player, um, tremendous competitor, and also one of the great trash talkers of all time. Peyton with the steal, he puts it down. And that apparently had something to say to Jordan. Oh, Peyton Jordan having some words, face to face. Glove will talk smack to anybody. We'll talk about your mother, we'll talk about your father, we'll talk about your kids. He was a great competitor. Uh, he's the type that he would talk so much smack that you could never take it personal, just started being funny. I mean, he was the type of person who wanted to tell you before the game what he wanted to do. So, um, you know, he was going to let you know, and sometime right there at the jump ball. So he would tell you, I'm going to beat you down, and I'm going to score 20 points on you and have 10 assists. It's not that you're going to be able to do about it. And he would go out and get 20 and 10 and, and do a pretty good job of it. <laughs> I just raise up on you. Raise up. Oh, he ain't never seen nothing like this in college. No, no, you cannot. See, you cannot do that. Wait, don't look at that. I think it made you want to get back at him even more. But ultimately, the real frustration came in how great a player he was, backing it up. That's, what, that's when trash talking goes to another level because if you trash talk you can't back it up you're just a clown first time, the first we, time. we met we, we're playing in seattle and i catch the basketball and and all i hear is all right. I'm, <laughs> I, I can't repeat what he was saying but and i'm holding the basketball and i'm looking at him and then i i had to turn around and like is, is he is he really talking to me because he was talking so much trash was it shocking like, Hey, I had to do it. I didn't. I didn't I know him to. though. Yeah, he didn't even. Isaiah didn't even know who I was. Really, I. Yeah. No one knew who you were. You were no. just talking. I yeah. stopped for about five seconds. We, the game was going yeah. on. I was dribbling the ball, and he was talking. And I picked up the ball just to like <laughs> look at him. I, we we kind of joked about that, especially at the Olympics. The the glove. It's uh, he was he was handsy, and but that wasn't really where it came from. That the term is just that he would lock people up and hold them down. Consistent. Tremendous warrior-like play. Um, every year, every game, every minute, uh, every quarter, uh, he was uh, a tremendous basketball player. And again, I, I don't just mean dribbling, passing, shooting. It's it's being prepared to play, uh, knowing your teammates, knowing your opponents, and, and being prepared mentally to play. And, and I think you got that every night with Gary P. It's a tough one because you, you're talking about how to play the point guard and guys that could do a little bit of everything. And Gary Payton and John Stockton represented the 90s, I mean, in the, this 90s decade in two very, very different ways. Um, and so it depends on what what kind of style of ball you'd like to play. And I played with Gary in Seattle and grew up watching him. Gary Payton? No. You never played with Gary Payton? No. I, uh, I worked on television with Gary Payton. Oh, okay. You, you, mm -hmm. worked, you worked on TV with Gary Payton. Uh, Jalen Rose said that... Well, have you ever played against Gary Payton? Well, yeah. Yeah. We, I was on the Bulls. I didn't play that much. Well, I did play, but not that much. I played against him. I thought he was the best... I didn't know who he was when he came in the NBA, let me tell you that, because I don't watch college, uh, especially when I was in the pros. I, no reason. Uh, I hated watching film, so I really didn't want to watch it. <laughs> so he came to the NBA and was loud from rookie year on. Well, Jalen Rose said that he was the most hostile and angry trash talker yeah. he had ever encountered. 
You know, Gary Payton is not only one of the greatest players of all time, but probably the best point guard defender of all time. That guy was insane. Not only his trash talking skills, but he always lowered his body and made life miserable for everybody who was playing against him. And if I would have to rank him all time, I would have him in my top 40. Yes, that high. Because I rank defense super high. Just my opinion. So you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the content. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.